Hello there, and uh, welcome everyone to the Connecticut LGBTQ Film Festival. Um, and we're here uh, for the Q&A for the film Cicada. Um, and I'm joined today uh, with several people from the movie that you'll recognize. Matt Pfeiffer, who is the director, writer, uh, editor, and he also plays Ben in the in the movie. Um, we have Kieran Mulcain. Hopefully, I'm getting that getting your name pronounced. Kieran Mulcair. Kieran Mulcain. Yeah. Um, the co-director. Um, this is his debut uh, film for both of them. Uh, directing anyway, right? Um, Sheldon Brown, who is was also one of the writers on one of the storylines, and um, he plays the actor Sam. And Eric Schleich, Schleicher? Schleicher. Schleicher, sorry. Um, who is the director of photography. We'll be asking all of you guys some questions later on. But um, why don't we just start off with um, going around the horn and, and having everyone kind of say uh, how they got involved with the film. Um, oh, actually, I want to start off, before I get into any questions, I want to start off a little differently because I want to congratulate all of you because I don't know if you've heard um, or if it's been leaked to you, but Cicada is the winner of this year's Jury Award for Best Feature Film at our festival. Thank you! Yay! Yay. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. So we're starting off on really I'm very upbeat. So. Yeah. <laughs> so we're all going to Mohegan Sun. Yeah, yeah. Down Long Island ice teas on me, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Extra tank, please. <laughs> so Matt, why don't you um, why don't you start us off with uh, you know obviously we wrote this we wrote the story so it starts with you. Yeah, so it started in this distant land where all these people have funny accents and asymmetrical bobs. And um, it's called Long Island. I don't know if you've heard of it. Oh. And you know what's funny is I would uh, drive just five minutes down the street from me, and I could see Connecticut from <laughs> the shore, no joke, uh, through the Long Island Sound. So I was pretty depressed this one winter, and the only thing that got me out of bed was, was writing this story. Um, I have a lot of similarities with Ben. Um, I guess the biggest difference is that I have an earring now. Um, and I started writing this project, and it just spilled out of me over the course of a month. Um, like Ben, depending on what was going on in my life or in the news, like, for instance, with the Jerry Sandusky trial, um, certain uh, symptoms would flare up, um, which... You know, I thought I was dying. I thought I had a brain tumor um, or MS. And I went to a dozen different doctors trying to figure out what I had. Um, and in the end, I, I didn't have anything. Um, I really just had to come out about um, this thing that was uh, deep inside me. Um, thing I wanted to ask you about, was, did you start writing before the Sandusky trial? Or was the Sandusky trial some, so there was a sort of a, that that inspired you to start writing i think the sandusky trial never ended i mean it still goes on doesn't it for a lot of people um i started writing in 2018 so uh about five years um after the close and and uh yeah it came together very quickly so it was january of 2018 um by february february 7th i texted sheldon um Sheldon and I had met in 2015, um, and he lives in Chicago. I had never um, thought of anybody else for the role, and I and I texted him. I said, "Hey, if you're in, you know, whenever you're in New York, let's get together." And he happened to be in New York, so we met up um, that week and got drinks at this bar called Syndicated. And uh, in the process, Eric has always been involved. Um, he is my longtime friend and collaborator. Uh, we worked on a project called Baghdad, Florida together um, and shot a short with Kieran um, uh, in 2017, 2016, um, called Pop. 
<laughs> um, so everybody's friends from the beginning, and um, and it came together very fast. And then something happened in April uh, that changed the course of um, the project. And um, Sheldon, do you want to uh, take it from here? Yeah. Uh, so when Matt first talked to me about this in February, I was like, you know, completely uh, shocked that he even wanted me to be in this film because I had no previous film experience before. Um, you know, he was just telling me that he thought I would be great uh, for the film. And so I was just like kind of hesitant um, in the beginning because of that. Um, but then, you know, after looking at the script, which is gorgeous and having, you know, really wanting to, to get some experience on camera, um, I decided to come on. But shortly after our conversation in February, um, in April, I was shot in a drive-by shooting in Chicago. Um, and so I had no idea what kind of uh, performing I'd be able to do because um, I had to stay um, um, some pretty heavy injuries at the time. Um, and then talking with Matt, you know, we were in constant contact while I was in the hospital and while I was recovering um, about still wanting to do this project. And um, an element had changed, of course. Um, and just because, you know, I was so nervous about incorporating, um, you know, being able to, to perform and not knowing what I would look like and how it would sound and feel, um, we decided to use all of that and um, to really transform the story in a new direction um, that allowed not only the character to have a little bit more life and a little bit more um, of a conflict for himself, but me as an artist and as an actor, um, I had to go do a little bit more heavy lifting on that on that front too as well. Um, uh, two months out of the hospital, uh, went to New York and shot this film. And Karen, I remember talking to Karen right in the very beginning, um, and you know he reached out to me throughout this entire process, and he can tell you more about how he came on too. I, I have to compliment you though. I, I do think that adding that additional storyline about your own trauma really made the you know storyline more richer and made your character richer. And so I, you know otherwise it would have been stories about just coming out and being in the in the black community, coming out in the black community. So I, I, I really think it added a lot to it. So. Thank you. Uh, so Kieran so tell us Hi. how are you <laughs> um so so i know you had worked with matt before i'd been in the class with him right yeah yeah we had met um i uh i met him at a premiere of uh, a web series he had uh created and i thought this guy is a genius so we connected on uh social media and then i convinced him to take an acting class um that i was in and I was working on a scene that was dealing with um, with issues of sexual abuse, and I had been forthcoming about having experienced my own as a child. And um, so we we first connected on that, and then that short uh, film that Eric, Matt, and I had worked on together was uh, uh, on the same subject. And then Matt had written this film a year later, and uh, asked if I had never directed anything, but I was curious about it. Um, and so he asked if I would co-direct and I was terrified too, but it was one of the best screenplays I'd ever read. And I was like, I have to. And then he had connected me with Sheldon to talk about the character ahead. And Sheldon had such a grasp on the inner life of this character before, um, you know, it's in, in its incipient stages. Um, I mean, he inspired it, but you know, <laughs> there was enough, enough added to it that I was like, we, yes, him, him, him. Um, and then the tragedy occurred. And so he very bravely agreed to incorporate a very fresh wound into that storyline that is not, uh, uh, most, most like acting theorists or acting teachers would say, not safe, don't do it, don't, don't do it. You, it that it hurts too, too bad, but he did it. And uh, the film is what it is because of it. Yeah. One question I had was, um, do you have any plans to work with any um, groups that focus on sexual abuse, survivors, anything like that? As and 
and share this film as kind of a therapeutic thing or to, to open the discussions with, with people? We have talked about that and we've wanted to do that uh, for a while. Exactly how to access those groups while we're on this festival circuit is, <laughs> is uh, a little mysterious right now. But beyond that, it's been a, a, I mean, central to our vision, especially in the people who have viewed it ahead are like test audiences who are sex abuse survivors coming forward and talking about how how it affected them has been some of the most you know fulfilling moments that we've had so it's definitely something in our in our uh on our to-do list <laughs> it's definitely something that, that means a lot to us all right okay um so i don't want to uh, ignore eric either so eric um just a question for you yeah. how did you how did you get involved? I I have to say, um, the the film looks like a million bucks. I mean, it's it, it's beautiful. I'm sure the budget for films like this are are shoestring, but um, you really made it look like um, incredible. Thank you. Um, no, I mean I think everyone nailed uh, how we all got together, but. Um, I think obviously recognizing everyone who isn't on this call to to make it come together, uh, producers to PAs, you know, is really, really important. But um, as far as creative, you know, I've always thought of this as kind of a, a trifecta with Sheldon and Matt being the actors and the writers and the people who, you know, experience some of these things in their own lives. Um, and then Kieran really pulling the emotion out of them day of. Uh, these are skills that I do not have. Um, but I think Matt and I's working relationship and the trust and the pre-pro process of us talking about references, um, it allowed me to take a lot of risks uh, that made this film as beautiful as it was. So really proud of everyone coming together to make that happen. Yeah, I loved, I loved a lot of the, you really focused a lot on the close-ups, really kind of as they were telling his emotional stories, kind of zooming in, and, and, and you felt like you were so much closer to them. Um, so could you talk about the use of, of close-ups versus, you know, any other shots that you, that you took? Yeah, no, I think, um, I mean, this is a drama. This is a very emotional story. Um, it's a very intimate story. And so, you know, I, I'm sure there's other ways to tell that, but I wanted the audience to live in these moments and really feel them, um, be a part of them. Because, you know, as, as we've talked about, people are, uh, it's bringing up stuff in themselves, things that they, they have experienced and, um, hopefully it allows them to open up and share and and feel good about themselves after watching this film. Yeah. Um, and you really had me with, first time I saw the, one of your shots at the puddle and flipped it upside down. Yeah. And, <laughs> what am I looking at here? Why is this not right? And then, and then realizing that you're filming the reflection. Yeah. <laughs> also, something Eric is leaving out that you have to know is Eric was the whole crew, the whole camera crew. <laughs> <laughs> the Eric, Eric was pulling focus while on a skateboard, <laughs> you know, <laughs> following these actors. It wasn't. It had. That's a level of mastery. I think that a lot of a lot of DPs don't reach, and and it's also a story that doesn't get told that people don't know. <laughs> the whole camera crew. He was a whole camera crew. Also, I wish we had the, I, I have the video, but Eric running around the backyard getting the last shot of the film. Um, it was just Eric and and this little boy, Bo, um, Sylvester Karim, and uh, he got it in focus somehow. This kid <laughs> running in circles, you know, spinning around like this. And like we go to look at the footage and it's like, perfectly and focused right when we come and the lights coming through and everything so that's like you know there's something the universe is a part of that one yeah <laughs> so matt i want to go back to you a little bit um 
So I know a lot of the story was kind of based on your own experiences, but I was wondering if you could tell us um, if what what things were not were not part of your story, or what things how did how did this story differ from your from your personal life? Um, yeah, that's a good question. So, so many of the actors in the film, um, so many of the characters are named after the real people in my life. Like my mom's name is Debbie. Uh, my sister's name is Amber. Um, my name happens to be Matt and the character happens to be Ben. Um, so that's a big difference. <laughs> I guess it depends on, um, it's who did it specifically. Um, that's the biggest difference. Um, in a few cuts, uh, early cuts, people in the audience thought that my own father had done it, and that was uh, uh, deeply upsetting, but I understood how they could see that because we left things very ambiguous. Um, and on that note, I want to say that it was somebody who was close to the family, um, and that 90% of these cases do happen by somebody in the family or close to the family not like a stranger lurking in the shadows or in a public bathroom, you know, used um, in these apocryphal stories on the right to justify like not giving, uh, you know, trans people um, their rights. Um, so, uh, yeah, um, a lot of it is very close to home. Um, yeah. I, I was kind of wondering, um, since it, since you are bringing this story to film and it's, it's really exposing, um, you know, some hard, you know, difficult times in your life. How has it been on your families, both yours and, and Karen's, because you've been open about your own abuse in the past. So I'm wondering, is everyone on board? Is everyone supportive? Yeah, everybody's been very supportive. My mom read the script, but she still hasn't seen the film. Oh, so wow. <laughs> we're going to see it in New York. Um, I think we can announce that now, October 24th. Um, so that, <laughs> my mom's going to take the Subaru, and she says she's going to stick her head out the moonroof, so we'll see if they allow that. But it's going to be it's going to be nice. Um, everybody yeah, has been very supportive. Um, Kieran, do you want to? talk about it I, it's a tricky one i i don't know i don't know that my dad no, okay. no, quite understands what i mean because i've only acted up until this point so i don't know about this and i found out this was actually showing uh, one of my 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 abuse happened both within and, and outside the family and like it was and i'm still in contact with my abusers as well and so some of them and like, I I was I w was telling one of them about this film showing where they lived, and now I'm like I uh, uh, <laughs> I don't so it's very tricky. It's weird. It's uh, it's weird. Um, yeah, and who know There are maybe maybe some of my abusers will see it, and I don't the ones I don't know, and that would be maybe healing in its own way. I don't know. Sorry, that's a, a heavy answer to your question. Uh, I don't. Uh, I don't. It's a heavy question, so thank you yeah. for, for opening up like that. Um, uh, another question from Matt. Um, I know early on in the film, film, it was clear that Ben was clearly sexually open to everyone and anyone. Um, how important was it to you to establish the kind of the diversity of your relationships, not only gender? Um, but racially diverse, uh, and then we'll go to Sheldon and talk talk a little bit to him about the diversity. Yeah, it's it was incredibly important. I um, I didn't really have an agenda in doing that uh, from the get go. I was really just writing my experience. Um, but I, today is Bisexual Awareness Day, I believe, or was it yesterday? Yesterday. I think. Um, and obviously, bi erasure is a big thing. You know, in a lot of these um, films, it'll be like, oh, you know, I just needed this. And then I realized that I don't like women at all. Or the woman will be like, I realized I don't like men at all. And I think growing up with that binary um, is pretty devastating because you think as soon as you have one queer thought um, that that's it, you're, you know, you're queer now. 
And if I knew that at a young age, I think it would have, I think it would have helped a lot. <laughs> Great, thank you. And um, Sheldon, I was hoping you could, um, you know, elaborate on the role of diversity, the role of, um, you know, diversity in the film and how important it was for you to tell the story of, of coming out in the African-American community. And could you just um, talk about that a little bit? Um, yeah. Um, you know, I think that the story takes place in New York, so it probably should be diverse because that is where, you know, it's, it's a mecca of diversity is in New York City. Um, so it's, it you know, di you know, diversity not only as an uh, actor of color, but also just being in the country that we live in, representation matters. Um, I think in queer narratives, representation matters. Um, I, you know, you don't, besides Noah's Ark and Moonlight, those are the only two um, kind of queer films of color that I know, um, you know, outside of, you know, document like Paris is Burning or something like that. Um, so, you know, you don't often get a chance to see um, queer people of color and how they deal with life, just like everybody else. Um, and, you know, those unique, uh, coming out is just a unique, um, a unique process that I think everyone has to deal with in some way. Um, I think in Sam's case, you know, it's a little difficult because he has a family that is in the church and of the church. Um, and, you know, his dad is a, a single parent. And so, you know, he has sons and he's trying to raise his, you know, his kid. Um, and I think it's really hard for a lot of parents, especially uh, parents who have to live in a world in which they are uncertain of their child's safety um, and freedoms in this country, um, of how to protect that child and, and, and love that child and try to shield them from as much hatred and oppression as they possibly can. Um, and I think that a lot of Black men, maybe queer Black men, carry that weight sometimes with them. Um, I, I don't have that close of a relationship with my own father, so and it's, it has nothing to do with my sexuality. Um, so that was kind of tricky because that's not what my life is. Um, and so I've not had that, that, that struggle of having to come out to a parent um, who was not accepting of it. Um, but, you know, that is something that creates an interesting dynamic with my character and Ben's character because it comes from two different families with two different um, kind of support systems and, and and went in and that's shaped them to be two different human beings and they're having to um, negotiate that with one another. So I think that adds um, a lot more texture and a lot more, um, um, you know, a lot more drama and a lot more at stake for the both of them. Yeah. Um, I was wondering about the choice to, that um, Sheldon was raised in a single family, I mean, single parent family. and. Was was there more behind it, or just that that just happened? You just wanted to show a different a different kind of family. Was there a reason that, that his mother wasn't present? Um, yeah. yeah. Go ahead. No, no, that's you. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think uh, it was a choice of originally that. Uh, so many times when you see these stories, it's a single mom and you never see a single dad. Um, and it was purely, you know, on screen you see my mother and you see his father. Um, so if it was my father, I would have, you know, um, probably discussed having it be, uh, you know, a single mother. But originally, Kieran and I did, uh, we did a rehearsal with one, uh, what was her name, uh, Kieran? Remember we had a... Richard and yeah, and so we were definitely thinking about um, a few different actors. Um, yeah, yeah Michael, Potts, Michael Potts. I mean, if you could get Michael Potts to play your dad, he would be yeah, his dad would I, be a character. I'm, so, I, mean, I definitely Michael want Michael Potts, Potts to be my dad. I, I definitely have told many people that he mm -hmm. is my father. So. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, um. All right, so 
just uh, one of the lines that really hit me was uh, when you, um, Matt, I think you said it was the line, I, I've always thought if I ended up with a man, it would mean I lost. Um, so I, that, that really hit me and I, and I wonder if um, people in the LGBT community who have experienced um, sexual abuse, if that's something unique to the LGBT community in that, um, that they feel like somehow the two are, are tied together and it's a failure if you end up becoming LGBTQ. I, Thanks. It's a, um, I'm glad that that had an impact on you. Um, it's, I guess it was twofold. Um, I definitely thought that I was queer because of what had happened when I was a kid. Um, and I was simultaneously trying to bury that um, experience in my sexuality at the same time. So... Yeah, I don't know. I, I I think a lot of friends have had a similar experience um, who have been abused where, you know, they feel like it's directly tied. And, um, and you know, when it's your first sexual experience, um, and obviously that's indelible, uh, it takes a lot of thought and therapy and I uh, love to uh, get through that. And um, yeah, I remember going on this trip and I was spending my time with this guy in his 50s who um, is single and had never been with anybody. And um, I just remember when I left um, how um, lonely he looked and uh, how devastating that was for me. Um, because at the end of the day, it didn't matter why I loved who I loved. Um, it just mattered that I could love, and it was a beautiful thing to be able to, to love. All right, thank you. Um, so I, I do want to kind of go around the horn one, one more time to just Ask everyone um, what else what what else you're working on and what's what's next. Who wants to start? How about you, Eric? Um, I have a few scripts, but uh, obviously, with what's going on in the world right now, uh, production's a little bit on standby. So, um, just hoping to one day be able to uh, make those projects come life. All right. Um, how about you, Sheldon? Um, yeah, so as you know, we are in the midst of everything right now. And uh, so um, the performance, because my job involves many people being together in the same room, um, it's hard. Um, so, uh, you know, right now I'm, I'm pretty much teaching and I do a lot of teaching um, artists work with high schoolers in Chicago um, and working on a, a fun art project for um, some elders, a part of this organization um, that works with the elderly. Great. How about you, Karen? Um, I am <laughs> continuing to audition in the glamorous actor's life, praying for live theater to start again. And uh, Matt and I are in pre-production for something that I just don't know how much we can say about it. So I have to pass the torch to him <laughs> to find out. But we're in pre-production -pre 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 for something. Okay. And you, Matt? Yeah, I, I have to pass the torch to Kieran on this one. Um, <laughs> uh, it's a queer horror film, and we are working on it with a fine, uh, fine DP who... <laughs> Um, yeah. I don't, I don't know where to begin. Uh, <laughs> Eric Schleicher. So, also, I want to say that Sheldon had a gorgeous article come out yesterday in the Chicago Tribune. Uh, check it out. It is so beautiful. Um, and really the, too, I mean, Sheldon, I just read it again. Just so our, do you know the name of the name of the article? So our 
our viewers can pull it up? You type Sheldon Brown, Chicago Tribune, um, you'll definitely find it. Okay. All right. Well, I want to congratulate all of you once again for sharing such an authentic, uh, powerful story and uh, really moving us um, to the point where we felt you, you needed to win the jury award. So, so thank you all for joining us. And, um, and I guess that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.